Hello everyone. The Formartin and Buchan Way is a long distance footpath and cycle route established on the track bed of the closed railway from Dice near Aberdeen to Peterhead and Fraserburgh. Join me as I cycle from Dice to Peterhead and back to see what's left of the former railway line. Another early morning start at Lenzie, this time waiting for the train to Stirling and Aberdeen for Dice. Extra cycle storage space in the HSTs now, so they now hold six. Time to admire HSTs and an Azuma at Aberdeen before catching the train to Dice. Here comes the train to Inverurie, which calls at Dice and Kintore, and it's going to cross over onto this platform, I hope. Yeah, shiny train. Dice Station. Once the junction for Fraserburgh and Peterhead, Dice is now better known as the station for Aberdeen Airport. But the line to Peterhead and Fraserburgh is now a cycle route, which I'm going to follow. The cycle route starts at the top end of the station car park, which is very convenient. You can watch the football free of charge from the cycle route. 40 miles to Fraserburgh, but uh, Peterhead doesn't get a mention. And here's a view uh, up the old railway line. I suspect that might be an original railway company gate. That has the look of old station building about it at Newmacker. Looking the other way back towards Dice. A few houses have been built on the station site and people have been putting flower pots on the platform. Scotrail don't come here now, but um, they still have their little trains. And a plate layers hut, uh, taken from just under a bridge near Newmacker, between Newmacker and Odney. And there's the uh, bridge, I'm looking towards Dice. Between Newmacker and Odney we come to Tilly Eve Crossing, with a beautiful pair of gates permanently open to the road. There's a crossing keeper's cottage, as well as an old wooden bothy, leaning slightly to the left. The crossing gates need a fresh coat of paint, I think. And the next stop on this tour is Udney. The down platform at Udney station, which obviously had a passing loop because the two platforms are two tracks apart. The station house is now a private residence and there is a football ground, a football pitch next to the station. Not a full size one, I might add. And there's the platform of Logie Reeve station and uh, you can see a clock on the station wall. Another one which is now a private residence. Quite a long platform really, they must have been planning some long trains and uh, there is a platform in the undergrowth here on the other side um, so there was a passing loop here as well. And this is Esselmont station looking fine in the autumn colours, which didn't appear in the 1959 timetable. And there is a castle at Esselmont, according to the Ordnance Survey map, which may merit a visit on another day. I don't think there's another platform here, just the one. Shortly after Esselmont, a fine viaduct takes us into the town of Ellen, which contains a brewery and, next to the station, a hotel. Ellen Station. Two platforms and uh, a block of flats on the down platform. This plate layers bothy is made of old sleepers upended and, and on the inside you can see the holes in the sleepers where the chairs were bolted. A surviving milepost which shows that we're 22 and a quarter miles from the measuring point in Aberdeen and we're quite close to Arnage station Arnage station which is fenced off again being a private residence but over the fence you can see the remains of like a goods platform and also um, a bothy probably a plate layers bothy again and that's the uh, station building at Arnage with the down platform and here the up platform <laughs> possible railway cottages at Arnage and a railway fence I think Milepost 23 and a quarter. I do wonder why only a handful of these are left.
Well, oddly enough, this one is the other side of the fence. I don't know if that was the original railway boundary. Slightly odd. 24 and a half, in case you're wondering what the two dots are for. And there's a metal bridge. Another plate layer's bothy. You can hear my echo. In an emergency, you could sleep in here. I would guess that wasn't built that long before the line closed. But you never know, maybe a local historian knows when the concrete bothies were installed. The sign on the gate of that house says Brookley Station. The sign would have said Ochnagat because that's where we are. I wonder where the sign is now. Ochnagat Station with the station house. Very nicely decorated. That's looking towards Peterhead and Fraserburgh. And here is the um, up platform, up being the direction of Aberdeen. And that looks like the remains of a station lamp on the up platform. Let's do a little uh, zoom in on it. Yeah, great. Superb. And I would guess that's where the rodding came out of the signal box, if there was a signal box on the platform. The station looks lovely in the autumn colours. And here we are at Maud Junction. Four platforms, rather extravagant. The two on the left for Fraserburgh and the two on the right for Peterhead. There we are, there's the Peterhead platforms. Five trains a day from Aberdeen to Fraserburgh in 1959, three of which contained a separate portion for Peterhead. And I'm not sure whether they separated before entering the station here and then entered the station separately or whether one of them uncoupled and reversed out of the station to take the line. It was all done in six minutes according to the timetable so it must have been pretty sharp working. If anybody knows the answer to that please let me know in the comments section. Hey, come here. Come here. That's somebody shouting at his dog not me. And the buildings on the central platform are still in use. Maud Station does host a railway museum which has never been open when I've been here. And there's the station buildings with a little wagon and another wagon and here we are looking towards Dice and Aberdeen. The remains of a very old wagon on the central platform at Maud. Let's see what the builder's plate. I think it says LNER Darlington 1928. And those are the two Fraserburgh platforms and opposite platform 5, the cafe. And you'll see the Maud Station Hotel as well. There is now a platform 5 opposite the station, a very good independent cafe which does very good ice creams as well as coffee and cakes. Platform 5 and that's the only train you'll get today. And that's looking towards Fraserburgh and um, looking towards Peterhead is kind of in that direction but it's been removed to um, take out a road bridge. Whatever that is seems to be all that's left of Mintlaw Station apart from the platforms and the formation. Two platforms again, double track, passing place looking towards Peterhead. Longside station, that's the platform for trains to Aberdeen and the platform on the other side uh, the station building seems to have had a bit of an extension over the years a little bit of a des res I think tactile paving on the edge of the platform not bad for a Victorian station the foundation of something, possibly a footbridge on the up platform although no evidence of anything on the other side New seat halt with a wooden platform. In Varugi, the last stop before Peterhead, is another one that's been well and truly fenced off. A local jogger has just told me it's Inverugi. Inverugi. Passing open farmland after Inverugi and then a mile through urban Peterhead before arriving at the site of the station marked only by a sign, Station Road. I can recommend the fish and chips in the Palace Hotel bar and after a night at the Ibis Hotel I returned to Dice the following day. Sadly it was raining when I set off but I was fortified by a bacon roll and coffee on platform 5 at Maud Junction. Well, 
made it back to Dice, which is always a very noisy station. It's a very good uh, cycle ride from here to Peterhead and back. 60 kilometres each way, that's 120 kilometres. And um, there is a cafe on the station, but I'm inclined to catch the next train, which is due in a few minutes to Montrose. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to buy me a coffee to help me make more films, please see this link to Kofi. Thank you very much. Thank you.